Thanks for tuning in to Retire Hour, the weekly show about complete retirement planning, including income planning and investing, tax planning, estate planning, and Medicare. Join us as we take a comprehensive look at retirement with financial advisors, Danny Goolsby, Larry Clefcorn, Matt Goolsby, Jonathan McCoy, along with other members of the Market Advisory Group family of companies. Welcome to Retire Hour. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us this week on Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby, your host this week. So today is the best day for you to start planning for a better retirement. Take action, make a plan, and get answers and questions and get an education on things you need to know that could be impacting you either today or in your future retirement. So with that, we'll get right into it here. I've got advisor in studio here, Larry Clefcorn, I'm a financial advisor with Market Advisor Group. Larry, as you've been meeting with people, what's what's on people's minds right now as as we're, you know, in this last part of January? Yeah, it's something that started last year, but it is intensifying. It is taking levels up. And that is what changes can we expect now that we're we have a new administration? Anytime there's a change in administration of or change of parties, at least, then there's there's going to be a number of changes that they're just going to want to get done. And um, and it has been said by this new administration, especially recently, it's starting to really affect people's emotions because they are talking about uh, changing of the tax code, which would erase a lot of the. the benefits that came from the previous one in 2017, I believe it was. Yeah, the Tax Cuts and Job Act of 2017 was the last time uh, the, the the tax code was kind of overhauled. And now that the there's some changes, like you said, political shifting in the landscapes here, there's been a lot of um, uncertainty and some concerns over taxes. And then here we are also into about to be into tax season itself for last year. So Taxes is on the mind of everyone right now. And for that, I guess, you know, let's go to our CPA here, Joshua Sikora. Let's bring him in of Market Tax Services. Joshua, you know, you and I were talking earlier this week about a a lot of things, all things taxes. But one of those big things was I had someone ask me, you know, our income changed year over year. Would we even get that income tax credit or the check? We didn't get it this year because our income in 2019 was higher, but our income is much lower in 2020. Are we going to be seeing those checks and where will, where would they be seeing those checks or those credits? Yeah, that question has come up a lot, especially in the recent, um, you know, bef- before the second round of stimulus, but especially now that the second round of stimulus has gone out and I'll tell everybody that you'll see this on your 2020 tax return. There'll be a new line for the recovery rebate credit. And that is where you will list out any uh, stimulus money you did receive. And then based on your 2020 income, if you were owed extra credit or additional credit that you did not receive, then that's where you'll see it come into your, your taxes and either you know decrease about, uh, the balance you might owe or increase the size of your refund. The really good news is let's say your, your 2020 income went up to a place where maybe you didn't uh, qualify for, for the stimulus. Uh, We're being told that you're not going to have to repay that credit. So you'll get extra if you qualify, but if you don't qualify, you don't have to repay. So a couple of things I just want to make sure I understand you just right. If your income was higher in 2019 and then lower in 2020, you're not going to get a check back. It's going to be like an income tax credit. So you might get a refund, though, if if that happens, right? That's right. That's right. So, So hold on. And then so before... Uh, I, that this is news to me. So you're saying that if your income increased in 2020, but it was lower in 2019 and you got these stimulus checks or stimulus payments, you're not going to have to repay those. That is correct. Wow. So tell tell me more about when you were saying though, about how, uh, as far as the income changing year over year and, and those payments. Uh, that's right. So if your if your income went, uh, down from 2019, to 2020, then you will receive the credit that you, the stimulus money you didn't receive during the course of the last year. So that means if you ordinarily would owe something on your return where you'd have a balance due, 
then that balance due will be lower than it would have been otherwise. Or if you ordinarily receive a refund, then that refund will be greater by the amount of the stimulus money that you should have gotten um, during during 2020. Okay. Larry, I think, has a question here for you. Yeah, Joshua. Joshua. Um, Is there a threshold or a ceiling uh, to which this doesn't affect people? In other words, I know that some people at certain incomes did not get a stimulus check. So does this have any component like that? Uh, that's right. Yes. Yes, there is. So there's an income threshold, 75,000 for single filers, 150,000 for joint filers. If you're under that threshold, then you should receive the full amount of the stimulus money over that threshold. It'll phase out um, to where you don't receive it. And that's news to me on that big surprise as far as them talking about not not making you repay it if your income increased in for the year 2020 and then being over those thresholds there. Well, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back with more tax updates here with Joshua Sikora. Stay tuned right after this. We'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned. Listen to Retire Hour on the go. Subscribe to the Retire Hour podcast. Search Retire Hour everywhere you get your podcasts. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by Frederick Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Why would anyone settle for less than full service? Incomplete advice could cost you thousands. Find out what dangers could be lurking in your retirement. At Market Advisor Group, in-house professionals help with today's challenges you could be facing. Tax solutions, Medicare help, estate planning, and investment advice. Our advisors work together with CPAs and attorneys to optimize your retirement. Find out what may be missing in your current plan. Call Market Advisor Group at 316-252-8707. 316-252-8707. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Check out our website, retirehour.com, where you can watch past episodes and stay up to date on current episodes. We videotape them so you can watch them or listen to them. Sign up for our podcast while you're there and get all the information that you can use for helping you in your retirement. Check out our Facebook page as well for clips from the show. to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby, and we've got in the studio here Larry Clefcorn, an advisor with Market Advisory Group, and then also we're bringing in our CPA from Market Tax Services, Joshua Sikora. Joshua, we ran out of time in the first segment, but I really want to hit these tax dates. I think they're important. So, And, and I think you and I were talking uh, earlier this week about how maybe this season's going to be a little shorter, and can you tell us more about what, what that means and what are some of those important dates we might need to be paying attention to as we're coming into tax season? Absolutely. It's a little ironic that after we had the longest tax season ever, we're now entering the shortest tax season ever. Um, so a few key dates that people might want to know about is that, first of all, if people have uh, businesses, uh, business entities that they need to file returns for, they can start with that. Right now, the IRS is already accepting those returns uh, to be e-filed. So if you've got a business, uh, now's the time to get moving on that. The uh, the next thing, next thing that people really care about will be February 1st or January 31st, February 1st. And that will be when the W-2s, the 1099 um, miscellaneous and the 1099 NEC, you know, non-employee compensation must be sent out. So that's the really what kicks off people getting ready to file their returns. February 12th is when the IRS begins accepting returns for individuals. So that's when everybody can start filing their 1040s. That is the latest the IRS has ever started accepting returns. And that's definitely going to compress tax season this year. Um, from there, March 15th, just like normal, that's when uh, S Corp and partnership returns are due. Um, and then after that, April 15th is when individual and corporate returns, as well as first quarter 2020 as 2021 estimates are due. Um, so on a kind of a rarity tax, tax season is supposed to end on April 15th on the dot. A lot of times that gets moved because of weekends and, and legal holidays. Um, so it's going to be a pretty tight tax season this year. As of right now, we don't have any reason to expect the IRS to extend it out to uh you know past april 15th like they did last year so if for some reason you can't get your return done by then make sure you get an extension filed 
So you and I were talking that um, they're they're saying they're not going to extend it. Now, things can always change. But at this point, they're saying they're not going to extend this. And so with the IRS accepting returns on February 12th, that's really late in the season, right? That's right. I mean, that's two weeks later than normal, uh, which is going to to put some more pressure and uh, on everyone, both, you know, taxpayers to get their returns going and then tax preparers to get everything moving on time. Um, one thing that people have, I've heard conversation about is people starting to file now and just letting them kind of sit in a holding queue before the IRS opens. But the real danger there is that uh, if something changes between now and then, then um, your tax return figures can change and you've already sent your return in. So you're kind of stuck and are going to have to to amend that return. Now, when you say changes, uh, not necessarily could be not necessarily tax code changes, but you're saying your software that you use for market tax services and, and all the people that work for you, that it it has updates every day, right? Right. Every day or two, it's pushing through changes uh, based on programming from the IRS, based on changes in calculations. And and uh, I mean, that's pretty common across the across the software industry uh, for, for tax return preparation. But that just goes to show that um, even though we're coming up on the beginning of, of filing, that things aren't set in stone yet. And there's still a lot of, of changes being worked through as we try to get ready for for tax returns. So let's switch gears here now and kind of start talking about some, again, these proposed changes here. And Larry and I were talking before the show how he and I both have an individual we work with and they have a, they have some non-qualified accounts, non-retirement accounts, and they've had some tremendous growth in those accounts over the past years. And I think their total capital gain would be well over a million dollars if they wanted to um, either liquidate that or do some things different with that money. And we'd had previous conversations with that individual and they just weren't too keen on paying the taxes, right? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it's it's at their own uh, peril that they continue to put that off and and not start, uh, at least in a systematic way, uh, addressing that by possibly making some sales uh, of their positions. But... Um, now, with all these changes, they have no idea, no idea um, what, how that might affect them on capital gains. Well, so if they liquidated all those and, and realized those gains last year, um, you know, and, and everyone's situation is different. But what was going on in their situation, if I recall right, they had only paid about 20 percent in capital gains on that money. Where now if Biden's proposal goes through where pretty much if you realize any capital gains and your total income is over a million dollars. You're going to be paying that top tax rate of 39.6%. So really, in effect, they doubled their tax bill if they decide right. to go ahead and liquidate those this year and those tax changes take effect. Right. And just so people know, we're talking about long-term capital gains. Most people recognize that as being a better tax than laying it on top of your ordinary uh, income that short-term capital gains would be. So... Um, you know, th- this has an effect even on that long term. Yeah. Joshua, what are some of the other highlights here that we've seen as, as Biden has been proposing here that might be a change? And then what, what are some things maybe that uh, you and I have been digging through and talking about that people might want to start, you know, paying attention to? Yeah, absolutely. People need to be paying attention now. Um, right now, we've got Biden's tax proposal. Now, um, anybody who's seen Schoolhouse Rock knows that it takes a bit for a bill to become a law. And in that process, there's lots of negotiations and things can change. But his proposal gives us an idea of where we're going to be starting from. And some of the things he's looking at changing, um, I mean, it's just going to affect a lot of different areas. One of the things you kind of mentioned just moments ago was that... um, you know, you talked about the long term capital gains. If you have income over a certain threshold, then those preferential long term rates will go away and you'll be stuck with ordinary rates. Well, on top of that, they're also talking about changing the top um, ordinary income tax rates from the 37 percent where they are now back up to 39.6 where they had been before the tax cuts and jobs act. So that's really just going to add pain on top of pain there. Um, another change you're looking at is, you know, 
uh, for people who aren't retired yet, who are still working, you know, just a regular W-2 job, is that they're going to um, increase some of those Social Security taxes, not necessarily the tax rate, but the amount of income that's subject to the tax so that um, – Ordinarily, you know, once you hit a certain level of wage income, then the Social Security tax would would terminate. Well, they're talking about increasing that that cap so that more of your wages would be subject to that tax. So one of the big uh, ones that I think um, I, I, to me is not getting enough press or enough enough tension is the elimination of the step up and cost basis upon someone's passing. So that is a uh, that is a big help. For when people want to pass things on to the next generation, I've heard it uh, from many people before that maybe they've accumulated some stocks or maybe even rental properties over the past. And when they want to start shifting that to the next generation, Larry, you and I have have helped a lot of people that have taken a benefit from that step right. up in basis. Right. And, I mean, that's something that really puts a little bit more onus on the person while they're alive that maybe they need to do some tax harvesting and 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 try and you know. Be mindful of that going forward because um, I think you can uh, maybe recall the the in the couple that you helped earlier this year that their she, her dad passed and they had that inheritance and she had a tremendous gain in yes. step up and, about, and cost basis there. I mean, what do you tell people about that? Yeah, and in fact, in that situation that that you pointing to, um, her dad gave her. Uh, about 30 or 40 percent of the total inheritance before he died. And so she had a taxable gain on it. And then um, and then the rest of it was after he passed away. Then she got a stepped up basis. Well, she really understands the difference now uh, between the two. And so if they take that away, that is a major game changer, I believe, for people who um have an aged parent that um father time is undefeated so you know if they're 90 years old or something it's just um uh, uh it's just a fact of life well and and it 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 just lends it that much more emphasis i think on the fact that we always stress you have to do planning you have to do planning you have to do planning this even further adds a new element into that as far as you need to maybe have conversations with your parents and those are yeah. probably not comfortable conversations to have, right. but you know, mom, dad, um, uh, obviously if you, if you want to use this account while you're still alive, do that. But is there anything you could maybe be doing to, to tax plan to where you don't pass on a big tax liability to the rest of us kids, or maybe if you're, you're, you've got right. brothers and sisters do some tax planning today. So Joshua, are there any other things maybe you want to point out before we go to a break here on Biden's proposals here in the, in the tax plan? Uh, absolutely. So we've talked about where the taxes might be going up, but there's also on the other side, there's going to be places where the deductions are going to be limited. So if you are somebody who itemizes, they're going to look at reducing the benefit of those itemized deductions for you so that even though your tax rate might be going, you might be moving into a higher tax rate. The benefit you're getting out of those deductions is going to be capped out at 28%. And that's going to definitely make for some complications in, in tax planning, trying to, to get some benefits while you move into those higher income brackets. Um, and then the same thing they'll be doing around, uh, people who have, uh, self employment or business income, limiting some of the benefits that they were receiving from the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, um, as people move into to higher income brackets. Well, I think I'm getting the message here. Taxes are probably going up and we just don't have the definitive answers on when and where and how much. But it's so critical that you'd be working with someone that understands the tax code or has resources such as yourself. A great resource to have here helping people the, with their retirement and their, their planning to optimize that from a tax standpoint. Well, stay tuned after the break. We'll talk about how some strategies you might want to use or maybe implement to harvest some taxes. We'll stay. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. Like Retire Hour? Like us on Facebook to get highlights and clips from the show. Go to facebook.com slash retire hour. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by Paul Gray Homes. 
Hi, I'm Matt Goolsby, partner at Market Advisory Group here in Wichita. If you have a 401k at a former employer, we're offering a free visit to discuss your options. Call 316-252-8707 to discover your strategies to help you get your money back on track to serving you. Remember, it's not about your money, it's about your life. Call us today at Market Advisory Group for your free 401k strategy session. 316-252-8707. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Don't forget to visit our website, retirehour.com. You can also download our podcasts anywhere you find podcasts. Just search for Retire Hour. You can also view the information that you've seen in these episodes on our Facebook page, Retire Hour. And also you can look us up on YouTube by searching Retire Hour. Uh, Plenty of information, past episodes. You can uh, view the streamed video version of our show as well. Get an idea of what it looks like here in studio. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Welcome back to Retire Hour. You know, uh, I think um, we need to maybe focus on some positive things here because right. taxes are really Debbie Downer. So, are there? Is it all doom and gloom, Larry, or is there things maybe? working with people in their retirement, working with people preparing to retire, is there things they can be doing still to maybe benefit them? Yes, absolutely. They can. It is not all doom and gloom. It, it's going to be that much more important to plan. I always say this to my girls as they were growing up. I'd say, plan the work, work the plan. And uh, you need to be working with an investment advisor who also works hand in hand. I suggest in the same building uh, (laughs) as a CPA and a tax service. I really do because they can help you uh, have a positive approach to it. I I completely agree. And Joshua, Sakura, let's talk to our CPA one last time here. Joshua, you're going into tax season here. And oftentimes, sometimes um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat you up too bad, but sometimes when we're in tax season, the focus is to get the return done and get on to the next person. But a lot of people need tax planning. And, and I think as Americans, we're so reactive when it comes to our taxes. When's a good time to look at tax planning? Frankly, no. <laughs> However, uh, the better answer is, uh, as really as soon as you get your return done, um, you know, I always tell my clients, I'm not just a tax preparer. I'm also a tax advisor. And so even as I do, hand a return over to somebody, we'll talk about what they can do now to make their next return a, a better situation for them, whether it's withholdings, whether it's about taking advantage of places where they can um, recognize some income and not have to pay taxes on it. Um, there's just different places that we can even just in a quick conversation start to make it a tax planning um, strategy that then we can develop further outside of tax season. Well, I think that's great advice that you give them there. And uh, on that note, and to, to kind of dovetail on what Larry was talking about, it's not all doom and gloom. Even if all these changes go into effect that, that are being proposed, are there still going to be some opportunities for people to reduce their taxation and do some tax planning there with different pots of money? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it'll be, it's just important to note where in the tax code can you recognize income and pay you know less taxes on it than if you just let things ride out on their own. So for example, under the tax law as we have today, um, for a single filer, you can... Um, Pay no capital, long-term capital gains tax if your income's under forty thousand, and if you're a married file, it's eighty thousand. So that means you can make some moves in a non-qualified account, sell some things, recognize some gains, and so long as your income stays under those thresholds, then you don't have to worry about paying tax on those gains. Um, a similar idea around Social Security, where if you can keep your other income down, then your Social Security income can be minimally taxed or not taxed at all. And then if we can work together with your financial advisor, which, as Larry said, is often helpful if they're in the same building, then we can uh, make a strategy working together as professionals to a- achieve a, a win for the client um, that that saves them some taxes. Well, and you do a great job at that as well. I've been in many meetings with you before and and helping people plan to have a tax efficient retirement is always something that I think uh, is beneficial to everyone that does it. But then I think it's also a lot of uh, with a lot of people and maybe some where they're getting their advice previously 
it's been an afterthought. They'll get so focused on what are they invested in? How is it performing? What is it returning? And they, they lose sight of the fact that it's so much, uh, it's just as equally important to, to look at the tax ramifications from things. So, and as you're going into tax season this year, if they need help with their tax return, they can call you and reach out to you at your office at 316-803-1040. Or they can call your office if they have questions about tax law changes or tax implications on their retirement. If they need help with their financial plan as well, they can reach out to Larry at his office at 316-252-8707. And they can have a conversation with maybe what are some things they need to be paying attention to. Because remember, today is the best day for you to start preparing for a better retirement. And that's only going to come from you getting educated and getting a plan together and making sure that you have the best plan for all the available options out there. Well, with that, we'll be right back after this break with our Medicare advisor and, uh, and our attorney talking about things that you need to be paying attention to. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this commercial. Stay tuned for more Retire Hour. Subscribe to Retire Hour on YouTube to see the latest episodes as soon as they're released. Subscribe at youtube.com slash retire hour. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by River City Sweet Shop. Every client we work with, we make a custom-made plan to fit them. We can take any situation that's thrown in front of us, look at what fears they may be trying to work through it, and come up with very creative solutions. We are unique to people that are seeking to try to have the complex things more simple. We work together as a team, as an advisor. It'll come up with tax questions. It's great to have a CPA here in the office that can answer those questions and give them accuracy. Market Advisor Group, proud to be local. Check out our website, retirehour.com, where you can watch past episodes and stay up to date with current episodes. Also check out our Facebook as well, Retire Hour, for clips from the show. And don't forget to go and see us on uh, YouTube. Search for Retire Hour or download our podcast of the episodes anywhere you can download podcasts, searching Retire Hour. Welcome back to Retire Hour. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Matt Goolsby, your host. In studio with me today, I've got our Medicare advisor, Bill Vodder of Market Medicare Advisors. And Bill, you had a question come in from a gal that talked about some advertising that she'd been seeing uh, for she could save some money because of this. And tell us about that, because I, I I've often had that question myself when I've seen that commercial on TV. It is a commercial that that ran a lot this year, and it's uh, regard it's in regards to a Medicare Part B premium reduction. You see it advertised as a premium reduction or a premium give back or a pre Part B premium refund program. They advertise it in a various different ways to catch your ear. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, I even saw one that said save one hundred and forty five dollars a month on your medicare premiums and that was basically eliminating that part b premium right yes it was and so when you're seeing i i, I truthfully knowing uh, all i know about all of our industries i can't believe that the regulators are even letting them advertise it that way i have a hard time believing it too because truthfully it is a complete bait and switch program they're trying to catch your ear to get you to call in to ask about it and then they will say oh no, sorry, it's not available for you or it's not available in your area, but we do have this. Right. Get and then they the shift phone. years to try to get you to look in a different direction. So what is this? I mean, it's basically if if you're destitute, right? I mean, it's it's fair on Medicaid, right? Well, generally in, in our area, it's one of two ways. Um, there is There are a couple of companies that have a program that are specifically for veterans that m pretty much exclusively use the VA hospital. All right. So the, these Medicare Advantage programs are designed to give them a partial refund, say 45 or $50 a month. Um, but it gives them a Medicare program that allows them to use the public doctors and hospitals 
uh, freely, you know, when they can't get to the VA. But what it doesn't have is prescription drug coverage. Most of the Medicare Advantage plans have prescription drug coverage on there. And these plans have that carved off and then it creates a refund back to the veteran um, because it's not covering that. So then uh, it, it, it I think you perfectly f- summed it up. It is a total bait and switch on on this thing where they're just getting them to call in and 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 offer them, you know, one thing. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't qualify that and then try and offer them another thing. What is the other option there? So if you're a veteran, it's a refund. But is is there another one where it really totally does eliminate that premium? Um, it could in certain parts of the country. Our Kansas, our Medicaid laws aren't aren't as strong as maybe they are in some other states. But for instance, if you qualify for Medicaid and Medicare, there are Medicare Advantage plans that combine those two programs together and give people a lot of times quite a few additional benefits and reduce the premium. So even when we're seeing those advertisements saying save $145 a month on your Medicare premiums, that's not even something that's even available in Kansas. No. (laughs) <laughs> that just blows my mind. Again, I don't even know how they can advertise it that way. That's it, I I totally would be surprised if the regulators or, or or even the government lets them do that next year. There might be some scenarios out there somewhere where where the people where the Medicaid system refunds the total premium, but um, I, unfortunately, I don't. Fortunately or unfortunately, I don't work with that market, but. So I don't really stay on top of it, but that's where it would exist. You'd have to be, as you said, totally destitute to where the government's having to, having to take care of you completely. And so when people see these advertisements and they call in, what, what's, what's something now that they're probably these companies that are advertising this way, they're, they're trying to sell them? Oh, they're, they want to sell them a Medicare Advantage product, but just not the one that they're advertising. So they, they, that's how they're getting around that is saying, well, we're, we're trying to reach people that maybe can qualify that way. And, and we're trying to be a benefit. Is that maybe what, what you'd think they were doing or, or, or? yeah, well, in, in the Medicare Advantage system, we, we in the insurance industry are not allowed to contact you. You have to contact us. And so they're coming up with very creative ways to advertise, to get your attention, to get you to call. Now, hold on just a second. You're not allowed to contact people, but don't people's mailboxes just fill up with all that mail? So that's oh, not them. That's not them contacting them. Sure, they do. But then you have to you either have to call or send back a reply card to request that we talk to you. So since this is, is this kind of a, um, a result of the do not call list forever ago? Is that is that what this is or is this? Another part of regulations. It's another Medicare. part of regulations. When the Medicare system came about, Medicare Advantage system came about, and Medicare standalone prescription drugs came about, somebody in the federal government did not want insurance agents out here badgering senior citizens to get them to sign up to Medicare Advantage plans or Medicare prescription drug plans. And so they put a rule in place that said we that we were not allowed to contact you. We were actually supposed to send if if you had to contact us, we had to send you a form to sign off on to check off the subjects you wanted me to talk about. Check it off, sign it, send it back to me before we ever met. And then if if there was a subject that you didn't check off, I was not allowed to bring it up in conversation. Is that still something going on today or they've relaxed that rule? It's still going on today. They have relaxed it a little bit, but it still exists. I still have to keep those pieces of paper for 10 years. Wow. On everyone you talk to. (laughs) On everyone I talk to. (laughs) That's something else. So, um, I mean, you'd think sometimes with government regulation stepping in, that's going to help the the situation. But here now it's, it's helped and gone all the other way. And now it's, creating kind of this, I don't want to call it a false advertising campaign, but I think you really sum it up really well with the bait and switch. Of yeah. They're, they're having something out there that's clickbait or, or a commercial to say you can save $145 a month in Medicare premiums or get it refunded. And then all of a sudden now that person's called in and now they've established that communication, right? Right. And so that opens it up to, well, so now let me talk to you about this. And it, it gets around that government regulation that's that's just uh, that's interesting that it, you can see that that come full circle there. The regulation came out to save people from from misinformation, but now they're almost using misinformation to get a hold of people. <laughs> I didn't think about it that way, but you're right. They're they're using misinformation to get you to call. That's so crazy. Well, is there anything else maybe we need to know about this bait and switch switch plan? 
No, it's just that this year, I, I'm, a lot of people are asking me about it. I mean, it was pretty advertised, pretty thick on TV. I mean, pretty much every, I don't want to say every commercial, but many of the commercials I saw were advertising this refund or rebate or reduction or uh, their Medicare Part B premium. Mm-hmm. And for the, the 90% of the people out there, it just doesn't apply. 90%? I was going to say even higher, but <laughs> yeah, for, for, for a large majority of the population, it's just not going to apply. So. Well, if anyone has any questions on this or want to talk to you more about it, they can reach you out at your office at 316-252-8707. And we appreciate you coming on the show this week. And we'll we'll look forward to seeing you next week on the show. Thanks okay. Cool. Stay tuned after this break. We'll be right back. We'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned for more Retire Hour. Have a retirement question? Go to retirehour.com and submit your question to be answered by the Retire Hour team. It could be answered on air. Submit your questions at retirehour.com. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by Soteria Technology Solutions. I'm Joshua Sikora, CPA with Market Tax Services. Are you tired of filing taxes yourself? Let the tax professionals at Market Tax Services help. Personal tax preparation for new customers is only $59, and that $59 rate is guaranteed for two years. We also offer discounts to new business customers. Our team of CPAs and tax preparers work together to ensure you receive the best possible service and reduce the stress of filing your taxes. Call Market Tax Services at 803-1040. That's 316-803-1040. Or visit markettaxservices.com. Check out our website, retirehour.com, where you can watch past episodes and stay up to date on current episodes. We videotape them so you can watch them or listen to them. Sign up for our podcast while you're there and get all the information that you can use for helping you in your retirement. Check out our Facebook page as well for clips from the show. back to retire hour i'm matt goolsby thanks for tuning in this week we hope you really enjoy and and find this information useful and helpful to you because remember you have to have a plan and if you don't have a plan you're just setting yourself up for failure but you can do this today is the best day to start planning for a better retirement and with that i've got in studio here our attorney gerald eidelman of eidelman law firm and you know you and i had a couple that we met with a couple months ago and I think it's important to bring this story up because we talked a little bit about Medicaid rules last mm-hmm. last week. Correct. And in this scenario, uh, I had a husband and wife. She had been diagnosed with all, early Alzheimer's and their house was free and clear. And I've said many times, if you can have your house, no house payment, have your house free and clear, you'll have a more comfortable retirement. Right. But here they they were trying to maybe position themselves to be in a better situation. So they said, you know what, let's sell the house. And so then they have all the cash from that and then they'll move in with their, their kids and then the kids can help the mom out as she declines, slowly declines at, with the husband as well, still working. And, and they thought that would be a good situation. Right. And I could see how it would be, um, you know, going to help take care of mom. Cause you know, you, you really want to put off putting someone in a, in a facility as long as, as long as possible and keep them with your family and, and your loved ones. But they were going to try and, and take care of mom there at their house. But really what they did was, was kind of a, a goof. Well, yeah. I mean, sometimes what happens is you have competing interests. Like you just mentioned, the fact is you want to be there with your family and make sure that, you know, you have some support. And on the other hand is other, other concerns about, having Medicare spend downs and, and other things like that, that will take away whatever your hard earned money has been saved. In this case, what they did by selling their house, they turned an exempt asset as far as Medicaid is concerned into an accountable asset. And so all the money they gather from that sale now will be considered available to them. If, if the, if the spouse ever needs to go to, uh, med- a nursing home or some uh, facility like that. So they thought they were, uh, I don't want to say protecting, but they thought they were doing the right thing of, okay, well, uh, we're going to sell the house. It's free and clear. We'll have that cash sitting over there. And if, if ever 
if ever they need care, then uh, and it gets past the point when they can't really take care of mom at at home with the with the kids, then she can go into a facility. Right. But now let's call it one hundred forty thousand right, dollars. Right. That one hundred forty thousand dollars that they have out there, they have to spend that down before mom will ever qualify for care. That's correct. Yeah, because that money is going is just sitting in a bank account. And there's really not much they can do with it at this point to turn into exempt asset other than buy another home, which is not the purpose. That was not practical because they moved in with their children by buying a trailer, I believe, or something like that. And there was still question about where the trailer would even qualify as an exempt home because it's not real property. Uh, it's, it's personal property, and that might also be an issue. So they might have been... They might have to spend everything they had saved into the house uh, to provide care for the spouse before uh, Medicaid will even step in. Where it even also further murkied it was they said, well, what if we pay rent to our kids? Right. Because right. then it's going to look like they're trying to hide that money. And then there's that look back period, right? Right, right. I mean, and and, and it, it, the, the, the question was whether paying the rent would create that problem. And that's uncertain. I mean, part of what it is, is you have to realize is that whenever a Medicaid claim comes in, there is a, uh, a caseworker that takes it on and makes decisions based upon their understanding of the statutes, the, the rules and regulations. And sometimes they don't all come out the same. So different caseworkers will have different opinions so they could look at that as something as giving away money, the rent, and consider that an available asset. So the money that was going to go to the kids for other purposes would be have to now go back to paying for medical services. So it, it really, I mean, and I felt for them, I, my heart went out mm. for them because they, they, were, they thought they were doing the right thing. That's right, yes. They thought they were being prudent and smart. When really all they did is they vastly complicated their situation Agreed, yeah. from 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 where, uh, sim- sim- simply put, you say that, uh, you know, if a, if a married couple, if one of the spouses needs care and there's no assets to pay for the care and they can't have the income, Medicaid will come in and they won't take the house from, from, right. the, from the, the spouse that doesn't need the care because they don't want to make the other spouse homeless. Right, right. And, and the thing is that. You know, if there was any need to take out money, you could always get a a new mortgage on the property that you own, and you can use that money without being penalized and losing any Medicaid uh, benefits. So they could have used that as a piggy bank, if you would, if they needed money. They didn't need to cash it all in and put it in the bank. But now here, mom has been officially diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. it's, It's on their radar. They have the cash. Mom's living with the kids. And dad, you know, dad's still going to work and, and trying to provide a living for the family. And it, it's just complicated, this whole situation. And now right. anything they do is going to have that five-year look-back period. Right, right. Yeah. So they can't do anything with the money, really. They can't give it away. They can't. The only thing they could do, really, is buy another home. And that would be the only solution to their problem. Uh, and that was not a feasible s- situation here. And that's why I tell people, you know, before you make, when you come to these places where, you know, you, you're looking at a future that will include having to have nursing home care, you're now aware that it's going to happen, that before you make any decisions that you plan and meet with a Medicaid attorney or a Medicaid person who has the understanding of what will happen depending on the decisions you make. Yeah, and, and always make sure you're getting advice before you start just doing things haphazard, haphazardly. Absolutely. Because you, it's going to have some ramifications there. Well, if you need help with that, and you can reach out to Gerald at his office, and I appreciate you bringing that in and talking mm-hmm. about that story uh, with me because, again, my heart goes out for him. But but really, make sure you're you're checking things out before you start making decisions. Well, stay tuned after this. We'll be right back with our advisor, Danny Goolsby. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay tuned. Get 
get more Retire Hour on our website at retirehour.com. Watch or listen to every episode of the show at retirehour.com. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by Graycon Building Group. Are you trying to game plan for retirement on your own? Retirement is a team sport. Market Advisory Group is ready to join your team. Our in-house advisors, CPAs, and attorneys are ready to plan and work with you. Nobody can play the game on their own. With the team at Market Advisory Group, together we can get you across the goal line of retirement. To schedule a team huddle, call us at 316-252-8707. That's 316-252-8707. Market Advisory Group, your total retirement team. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Don't forget to visit our website, retirehour.com. You can also download our podcasts anywhere you find podcasts. Just search for Retire Hour. You can also view the information that you've seen in these episodes on our Facebook page, Retire Hour. And also you can look us up on YouTube by searching Retire Hour. Uh, Plenty of information, past episodes. You can uh, view the streamed video version of our show as well. Get an idea of what it looks like here in studio. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Here in this last segment, brought in Danny Goulds, being an advisor with Market Advisory Group. And Danny, you know, I've been hearing a lot in the conference rooms. Uh, well, what about this stock? What about that stock? And what about this? And when all this um, um, hype gets in the news or maybe their friends are talking about it, they get so um, locked in and focused on this saying, I, I need to buy some of that. I need to buy some of that. Right. So what are some of the names that you're hearing in the, in the conference room of some maybe uh, hot stocks that, that are getting a lot of buzz and, and are maybe probably just really a fad or, 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 or maybe over, over exuberant and as, as cotton raised the, the prices up? Well, it's funny. It's, it, it is a funny uh, evolution to watch from our perspective that you can tell what's hot in the news cycle because of what's being buzzed around at parties or at the water cooler at work or what have you. Uh, There's a famous story. uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly true or not, but it's accredited to uh, Joseph Kennedy Sr., the president of the late John F. Kennedy. And he said this during uh, right before the crash of 1929. He said uh, he knew that when it was time to sell his stocks because he was getting stock sell tips and stock buy tips from his shoeshine boy. And he said, "When, when it makes it to the shoeshine boy, I know it's time to sell my portfolio. Well, as far as these um, these fad type investments, uh, when we're having uh, appointments and, and, and conversations with clients and, and prospects, um, you will hear things like, for example, there, for a long time, it's been gold. I mean, every other commercial on TV and radio, sometimes it seems like it's gold, buy gold, buy gold, buy gold. Then it kind of evolved into uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, is something. And then it kind of faded away. And then cannabis stocks, uh, it, they kind of came on the scene and everybody wanted to talk about cannabis stocks. And then Bitcoin kind of made a reemergence and it's it's back in the news a lot lately. Um, you know, uh, and then you have the darlings of the market right now. That's would be the apples and the Teslas and a lot of the big tech stocks. Uh, and some of those, uh, you know, Elon Musk of Tesla fame, um, he is a lot of things, but a genius. And he, again, he's a darling to the market. And so he's not necessarily made any money, but for some reason he has the ability to attract it. Yeah. I was looking at, um, uh, it's performance Tesla over the past five years comparison with the S and P. The S and P 500, you know, for the past five years is up about a hundred percent, and Tesla over the past five years is up almost two thousand percent. Yeah, and um, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying don't buy it. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy it, but you, you kind of wonder. Uh, the old adage is buy low and sell high. How in the world could you ever say it's a good opportunity to get into Tesla right now when it's so high? I mean, maybe it's going to go higher. It, but it, from a technical and fundamental standpoint, it really shouldn't even be that high. Correct. Yeah. It. Uh, in fact, you'll have uh, the way that they one way that they will attract new money when they start to get at these uh, overvalued bubbles, if you will, um, is they'll split their stock back down where the rank and file or the common man can more afford it. And it's not for the more wealthier investor. So here recently, not too long ago, Apple stick uh, stock, I think, split four to one. I think Tesla stock split five to one which 
Uh, again, all that does is dilute the the value or the, the price of the share, so it makes it easier for again, may I say, uh, the, the everyday person to to be more involved in it. And, and that doesn't still make it any more attractive. It's just again, he's a buzz. Uh, he's a buzz in our culture right now, Elon Musk. And so, uh, but again, it, it's it doesn't matter if it's Elon or w- with Tesla or if it's uh, 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 Cook Tim Cook with Apple or if it's uh, any of the other big tech firms. All of these are good, maybe to have a piece in your portfolio. But we're finding people who want to, as you said, I want to buy. I want to buy it now. And normally, when people want to buy it, when it's the the buzz around the water cooler, buzz around uh, the social circles, normally the moves already happened. Yeah, I got an email last week from someone that said, "Should I, should I be buying Bitcoin?" Like probably uh, <laughs> not 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 best for your situation because I knew some things that were going on there. But she just heard Bitcoin on the news and how Bitcoin was going straight up, and then now Bitcoin's pulled back a little bit and. For something that is so volatile like that, and Bitcoin is a whole nother animal. I mean, we could spend an hour on on that show on that topic just in, in and of itself because there's um, it's it's not a traditional um, very uh, hard to understand. It's not a traditional currency where you can trade it on on the forex and, and diff, different markets like that. So yes, it's its own animal. It's uh, it's certainly new and revolutionary, and that's why the media is all over it and, and focusing on it. But this fad investing and uh, you know. Be careful. Well, I think I think that's what we want to tell people. Be careful and cautious when when you go to that. Doesn't mean you know if uh, you want to do a little bit with that, but I wouldn't I wouldn't look at it as a um, a, a a typical or a stable retirement investment. Right. You know, Vince Lombardi of, of uh, Green Bay Packer fame. Uh, he was famous for his coaching style was going back to the basics and, and blocking and tackling, blocking and tackling. Well, when we come to investing and income planning for 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 the rest of our lives, we want to go to the basics. And and fad investing is fine if you want to uh, associate a portion of your portfolio to that. But fad investing for the rest of your life puts you on a roller coaster that you probably do not want to be on. Yeah. So be careful with what you're doing out there if you're going to buy into the fad. So we will thank you for tuning in to Retire Hour this week. Remember our website, retirehour.com. You can go check out past episodes, subscribe to our podcasts, and even watch our episodes if you're listening on the radio or wherever you're tuning in. We thank you for tuning in this week, and we'll see you next week on Retire Hour. expressed in this program do not represent financial, medical, tax, or legal advice. Please consult with a competent professional to provide advice tailored to your needs and circumstances. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor.